And I would like to invite the next speaker. The next speaker is a, we like to call it in our area, a researcher, a security researcher. His name is Omer Zohar. And he will talk about unblocking. We are talking blockchain, every time everything is connected, integrity. He will teach us now, thank you very much, and present us how to do unblocking of the blocking stuff. So, Omer Zohar, the stage is yours. Hello, everyone. Um, okay. So, um, well, nice. So, um, I'll start by introducing this project and a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a security researcher for the past maybe decade. Um, my, pa my last role, I was uh, head of research for uh, Top Scene Security, and now I'm working in a, a new undisclosed, under the radar startup. But uh, the, the project I'm going to talk about today is the, is the one I did between those jobs. Um, my main research focus has been malware infrastructure, uh, how malware communicate, how they uh, do stuff, how, what did the infrastructure that malware operators need to uh, do behind the scenes in order to uh, do this, their nefarious work. And I've always been also fascinated in blockchain. It was a hobby of mine since 2013. And I had a few months to spare uh, in the past couple of, uh, in, in the past year. So I figured that, uh, that uh, I would combine the two and see how um, basically malware infrastructure can, uh, can work, uh, can use the, utilize the, the properties of the, of the blockchain in order to do, to, to maybe to do something that is uh, better than what is exist. So let's start by setting the, the, uh, the baseline. What is malware infrastructure? So we as researchers, most of us, uh, we tend to focus on the uh, exploitation side, the, the infection side, uh, but, and, we, and a lot of people tend to forget that there's a whole infrastructure behind it. So a malicious infrastructure basically is supposed to uh, support the implant generation um, uh, of, the, of, the, of the executables or whatever it is that the, the, the payload is, uh, and then it has to support the delivery uh, and, uh, of, the, of this uh, uh, implant into some uh, hostile and unknown environment, and it has, it has to uh, uh, allow it to make first contact with its operators in a, in a very hostile and different network uh, scenarios. It has to um, be able to receive, execute, and exfiltrate uh, whatever it is that the malware is doing. It has to, to maintain uh, contact with its operator, uh, in, and it has to allow uh, mass control uh, over a lot of bots if this is the, uh, the use case. So, it, basically, if you can think about it, it's a lot of stuff and a lot of operations behind it. Um, I compiled the list of what I think is the ultimate infrastructure. These features uh, basically are, um, comprehend uh, what is, what is the, the, the ultimate goal of, of malware operations. So, uh, as starters, the, of course, secure communication. The communication, the, the wiring communication of the malware have to uh, be immune to modification, evade drop, and man in the middle. It has to be highly available. That is, uh, malware always have to find its operator. And, uh, and if it doesn't, the whole infrastructure doesn't work. It has to be scalable and support any number of uh, implants. It has to allow authentication. So only valid implants can connect and connect only once. Uh, otherwise, researchers like me and others can uh, uh, infiltrate into the network and, and, and block it or take it down. Uh, it has to remain anonymous, so the operator will not get shut down, get in jail, or whatever. Uh, and it, it has to not leak any data. So the commands and the data that I exfiltrate from uh, various places would have to be, uh, they, they shouldn't leak. And of course, it has to be takedown or takeover resistance. So again, researchers or other law enforcement okay, will, be, will have a hard time to take it down or, uh, take, or someone, some adversary will take it over. And of course, it's always nice to have low operational cost because end of the day, everything is money. Um, so all the infrastructures that I have researched in the, in the past decade all fail in one place or another in this list. So, I figure, okay, let's take the blockchain as a technology 
and see what it allows me to do where uh, other uh, infrastructures have failed. So I had a nice sentence about uh, what is blockchain, but I guess most of you know, and there is a guy that explains it much better than I do. Blockchain technology allows a record or a ledger of every Bitcoin transaction ever made to be stored not in one place, but across vast numbers of computers. That is part of what people mean when they say Bitcoin is decentralized. And decentralization has a lot of theoretical advantages from speed to security. Yeah, so basically this guy can explain everything in, in very short sentences, so I, I can't add anything more on top of that. Blockchain is immutable and is very, very susceptible to, uh, and, and this is the, the most important as, aspect of uh, blockchain that allows it to be secure. Um, I implemented my POC on top of Ethereum, and the reason I, I, I uh, selected uh, to use Ethereum is, again, from the main page of Ethereum, right out of the, out of the bat, uh, Ethereum is a decentralized platform that runs smart contracts, an application that runs exactly as programmed without any possibility of downtown censorship, fraud, or third-party interference. So you can see that right out of the, the box, Ethereum, basically any blockchain, but specifically Ethereum, allows you to um, cross off at least four of the features that I showed you earlier. Uh, on top of that, Ethereum is a very popular is the most popular blockchain, even more than in terms of, of nodes, uh, even more than Bitcoin today. It has more than 27,000 nodes, uh, which consists of a large peer-to-peer -peer network, which is encrypted in a, a, in a peer to peer uh, wire protocol, which is always which is encrypted and, and, uh, and is very secure. It also allows uh, the smart contract capability. Uh, it has the EVM, which can allow me to run code, basically, on the EVM. And it has the, the Ether uh, coin, which basically drives the whole thing and, and brings the incentive for the uh, network to work. Um, so let's bring it down and see exactly how this infrastructure works. So we have our operator. He starts by running uh, an Ethereum node. He runs it locally. Uh, this Ethereum node connects to the uh, blockchain, to the Ethereum blockchain network, and he starts to sync the blockchain. It's a process, it's a very heavy process, it takes 24 hours more or less, and it utilizes a lot of disks and, 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 and memory. Um, but finally, once it's done, uh, the full Ethereum node is up. Then, he generates a wallet that will be the owner of the, of the network, he unlocks it, and he deploys the smart contract. Now, the smart contract is where the, the magic happens, is where that, um, uh, the, the, the communication between uh, the implants and the CNC will occur, and this, this way they can communicate. Uh, he then uh, uh, starts a control panel, and basically uh, through this control panel he can invoke commands like allow and revoke uh, implants, uh, issue commands, and uh, fetch results. So everything that is done is doing to uh, commands to the smart contract, which basically will keep all the accounting for uh, and deliver the messages between uh, implants and CNC. Now, at this point, this, the infrastructure is basically done. Now, all we have to do is to generate some implants. So, uh, so for example, uh, what it takes to generate an implant, it first has to uh, create a wallet, and then it has to add, authorize this uh, wallet in the smart contract, and then it's supposed to uh, transfer some funds to, the, uh, to this implant, so we can do some commands over the, the, the smart contract, and finally, you have to pack everything together in a nice package, and by some magic that we won't discuss here, but you can probably imagine how, it, can, it delivers this package into a remote machine. Um, now, the input starts to run on the remote machine, it reads its configuration, and it runs an Ethereum node. Uh, the Ethereum node is run, runs in a light mode, uh, which basically doesn't download the whole uh, blockchain, it only downloads the headers of the blockchain, and it's ma much more uh, easy on, on resources uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the host computer. Um, so it's a very, uh, w and we have to do it because otherwise a lot of, uh, it would be easily detected. Um, 
Once it's done, once the, the blockchain is synced, we can start, uh, we can uh, uh, open the wallet and can basically connect to the smart contract. We do the initial registration. The, the smart contract will validate that this is indeed a valid instance. And once it's done, uh, the CNC can start issuing commands to the implant and uh, vice versa. Okay, so this is how the infrastructure works. Unfortunately, uh, because I, I was only given five, 15 minutes, uh, I could not show you how I build this infrastructure and know the bits and bytes behind it. It's very interesting. It's the base of the research. Um, I will later show you, uh, give you links and, and stuff uh, that you can read more about it. Uh, I also released the, the, all the code in open source. Uh, I would show you the, a demo that you will trust me that this actually works. So, so this is our, uh, this is how I deploy, basically the POC works. It starts by uh, uh, generating an account. Um, basically, uh, we, we're running a block like a node, initiating the blockchain, and running the, and, and uh, unlocking the wallet. Once it's done, we start to uh, con deploy the contract. Um, after that, we will start, once it's done, we're running the CNC server, um, which we connect to the contract and interact with it. Just a few seconds, and it's all. If I would have done this um, movie, we would all be waiting for like 20 minutes here. Um, so this is the CNC. You can see it's up. And now we start generating uh, the implants. So once it's uh, the, basic, the, the implants is generating a wallet uh, and, and authorizing it on, on the blockchain and all this mumbo jumbo, we um, we have we now have a, 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 an implant that is ready, and now we, by some magic, deliver it to another machine, and we run it. Uh, it will start run. It will run its own get node, and will start uh, syncing with the blockchain. Once this is done, uh, it will automatically register with the smart contract. Okay, you can see the account balance is one and it's trying to register. Over there on the left, you can see that it, the CNC already uh, uh, got to it and uh, delivers it on time. You see, the, the, success, the registration was successful. Now, we can start issuing commands. So, we do a net start command, uh, we run it, and then you can see that it over on the, it got, it executed, and returned to the CNC, uh, and we have the results over there. So, this is basically uh, our demo. Um, so, back to the, 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 the research question. So, is blockchain the ultimate infrastructure for malicious operation? So, let's go one by one. Uh, we answer from my research that, that maybe I didn't prove it here, but um, we will, I will try to convince you in the few minutes that I have. Uh, so, for, first of all, secure communication, as I mentioned, um, Ethereum has the dev peer-to-peer -peer, uh, protocol, which basically uh, is a secure and peer-to-peer uh, -peer network. So, on the on this, uh, uh, we are good. Uh, we, regarding high availability, then we have thousands of nodes that each one of them runs my code. Um, the blockchain, as I mentioned earlier, is immutable. So, when I deploy a smart contract, it can never go down. That I know that if I put some contract address in one of my implants, I know for sure that it will be there forever on the blockchain. So if my implant was successful in connected to the Ethereum network, I know uh, that it will that it will be able to communicate with uh, my CNC. Um, so we're good on the high availability. Regarding scalability, this is a more delicate issue. Ethereum now has a very problematic uh, scalability issues. Uh, and Transaction takes from tw two minutes to five minutes to confirm. Um, so uh, this will be a problem, but it will probably get solved in the next year or so, I believe. If not, we can always move to another uh, very other popular uh, uh, blockchain. Um, we got, uh, other than that, we have to re remember that we have to generate each and every one of the inputs separately. So this is a little bit a uh, uh, hindrance on the um, on the scalability. Um, so it's, uh, it's almost good. It will be good uh, someday. 
Um, so regarding authentication, we also good there. Uh, blockchain guarantees the implementation and the accounting that we do on top of the blockchain to be correct. Uh, the registration process that we, I haven't shown you here, but we take the session ID and we, and, and we cryptographically make sure that only the implants can connect and we do some uh, authentication. Uh, and we make sure that uh, only each and every implant can connect once and only once. Um, regarding anonymity, so there's no way to know for sure which transaction was, which node, what transaction was transmitted from. So uh, basically, we can't really know uh, where, where the nodes in the world and where they are, they are connected from. And it's also hard to know who is behind a, 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 an Ethereum wallet. So. Um, uh, so this is a problem. So this is a, so we are good on anonymity. And yes, of course, the uh, the, the malware operator does some nefarious stuff. Uh, regarding data leakage, everything in, on the blockchain is public. But on my POC, we deal with it by encrypting everything that we write on the blockchain. So we are good over there too. Uh, and regarding uh, takedown and takeover, so as I mentioned, blockchain is decentralized. Ethereum is supposed to be decentralized. Uh, so, and content cannot be killed. So, regarding takedown, it's uh, supposed to be uh, uh, okay. Regarding takeovers, this is a more delicate issue. Uh, on the, fa on the, in theory, there's not possibility to do any takeovers, but there's always bugs in the code. Uh, hopefully, my, bug, my code doesn't have any bugs. I checked. But uh, almost all takeovers and all vulnerabilities in Ethereum were caused by some coding mistakes and solidity, solidity the language that uh, blockchain uh, smart contracts are written in, can, is they have a lot of ways to shoot yourself in the foot. So, uh, so we're okay up to a coding error. And the last and not least is the operation cost. And this is the main problem today with Ethereum. It's just too expensive. My calculation were that um, it, it takes uh, for, uh, to operate one single bot every day for, for a year, it uh, costs around $6,000 in the, uh, the rate that were Tuesday, I think, and then the rate of $500 for one, in one ether. Uh, and this is very expensive. Um, other malware infrastructure uh, uh, costs a lot less. Um, and also, you have to remember that there is no flat cost. You pay for every byte that you send over uh, Ethereum. Um, and, and on top of that, you have to send some ether along with each and every implant. So if you lose it or something goes wrong, then uh, you're fucked. Um, okay. So, okay. So, um, so this is the main problem. And I think once we're going to go to another, uh, maybe the Ethereum would uh, go down in price, which is unlikely, but maybe we can think about other uh, 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 blockchains that will get very uh, popular enough in order to run this uh, code. So, f so finally, um, though this is my contacts, and the, all the code that I mentioned here is on this uh, uh, re uh, GitHub repo that you can all go to. Uh, the contract is also deployed if you want to play with it. Um, and uh, I would very welcome any feedback on the project and any suggestion and help that you can give me. Um, thank you. Do we have time for questions or? Don't leave the stage. <laughs> First, I don't know if you saw that. It was standing here. And when you put the last slide with all the code, yeah. all the mobile phone packed. <laughs> Everybody. It's recorded, isn't it? Yes, of course. But they it's easier than that. Slides. But this is nice. As more blockchain will be adopted, we will see more researchers doing such a marvelous work. And the way Omer did implement it is to teach all of us to look much more carefully about the way to implement technologies of smart contract and how we should be very careful from that. First, I want to thank you very much and everybody, applause to Omer. Thank you very much.